I'd love for you to give us a quick explainer on how COVID has really changed and perhaps accelerated your business, given the numbers that we're seeing. Yeah, so, so, so our activities in COVID are really in the area of, of biosecurity. So basically keeping things like workplaces and schools open. So just in the last three or four months, we've signed uh, over $400 million of uh, contracts with for K-12 testing with states. So California, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Maryland, uh, we're doing statewide uh, testing in those areas. Uh, basically, once a week, universal testing of every kid so that your kid doesn't end up in quarantine, schools don't have to close, you only send home a student, not a, not a whole classroom or a school. As a parent with kids in school, you know, yeah. I, I know this testing, testing is happening and COVID is out there. Like, it feels very close to home, uh, you know, what are you seeing in the testing trends? You know, what kind of numbers are you getting when it comes to positive cases? And how do you, how does that impact how you think this is going to play out for schools this year? Yeah, yeah, I have a six year old and a nine year old. It, it, it's top of mind. I, I think the, the big difference everyone needs to realize is, is the Delta variant about twice as infectious as what we were dealing with last year. So places that open, and you know, had my my student, my kid's school was open, and a lot of schools in the south were open. You know, what you did last year won't necessarily work, and so you're starting to see that. You're seeing districts shutting down in, in Florida, districts shutting down in um, places like Georgia that opened early. Uh, I think we should expect that. I think the answer is to put on masks, uh, and then also to be doing this weekly testing, so that when you have these inevitable cases, it's less disruptive, and the schools stay open. Uh, and we we do see the schools that are doing it. Ultimately, if they can contain it, if they can take the kids out of circulation before it spreads, they can keep case numbers low. That, that's the answer. Uh, and, and if you don't do it, you should plan on having your kids in quarantine a lot, which has been very frustrating for those states that opened early. We're learning new things about the potential and also the limitations of mRNA vaccine technology. Do you think we're going to keep needing shots to live with COVID, adults and children? Yeah, I think we will see regular boosters, uh, kind of like you see with flu. Uh, and, you know, Giga, we, we just announced a um, partnership with Aldebron, which is one of the big vaccine manufacturers, that we had completed a one-year program uh, that tenfold increased uh, the efficiency of their production of what's called vaccinia capping enzyme, one of the key supply chain ingredients in vaccines. And so this is a big part of our, our growth coming up is uh, taking a royalty with our sort of app store style business model at Ginkgo, where we get a royalty on the engineered cell applications that come off the platform. And, and so that's a big one for us coming up in supply chain for BC. So give us an update then on how you're progressing in human drug development, what we should be watching for. Yeah, so, you know, we announced a partnership with Biogen earlier this year in the area of gene therapy. You know, I think the big thing is, you know, if you think of what Ginkgo's built on. It's the idea that DNA is code that you can read and write so you can program cells. And, and that's what's happening with these mRNA vaccines and with gene therapies. It, it's sort of code as drug, right? And, and so I think you should expect to see a lot more of that given the success uh, of mRNA vaccines. And we expect to be right in the middle of that uh, by operating as a horizontal platform. We're, it's sort of like, you know, we develop apps. It's kind of, it's kind of like the opposite of the metaverse. Uh, you know, they're, they're all in the real world. Uh, and, and some of the biggest ones coming up are going to be in therapeutics. So another synthetic biology company, Zimmergen, took a pretty big fall a few weeks ago. And I'm curious how your model is different from theirs, what you're yeah. learning from what they're going through. Yeah, so, so this is the big, big distinction is the way Ginkgo operates is, is very much taking a page out of the tech company playbook. So, so think like an Amazon Web Services or an Apple App Store, horizontal across all markets. And then when an application gets developed, like say that, that supply chain ingredient uh, that Aldebaran's selling in vaccines, we develop the app and then the customer brings it to market and we get a royalty on it, right? So it's very similar to like a rev share that like an Apple would take on the app store. That allows us, you know, we ended last year with more than 50 cell programs like that. We just updated our projections for this year from 23 to 30 new programs. So we'll end this year with 80 active programs. That portfolio risk means we're not dependent on any given app success, just like Apple's not dependent on the success of any single app in the app store. That's very different um, than, than Zymergen where they had you know, a, a particular product they were betting on in, in the foldable screen space.